test has. <clears throat> Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. This is kind of a personal segment here because of uh, actually two different comments that I've gotten tonight and I felt like I needed to deal with these kind of head on myself. Uh, one is from a guy, Mike, and the other one is from Gary Lord, Gary's Lord's Way. I, I don't know if my wife deleted his comment or not, uh, but I wanted both of those comments posted because uh, at least in the one case here, the first guy is saying that he doesn't mean any offense by his comment. Uh, and since they've made it public, I wanted to deal with the issue publicly and it might be a blessing for women as well and I hope it's a blessing for men and yet at the same time to set the record straight for something that I really did not appreciate seeing right here. Uh, so let me first get into the comment and I'm going to kind of take in the direction I feel like that some of the people are going here because it comes back from what we call old school. I'm 52 years old so I guess I am from the old school myself uh, but at any rate there this guy here says I don't come to this channel to hear your voice. He's talking about my wife, by the way. And actually, I don't mind your interruptions or added content from time to time, but still a whole segment. No offense nor insult intended, but I would suggest if wanting to speak out doing your own segments, either place notice in the title so those that wish to could avoid or put your own channel rather than using Steve's as a his voice is more clearly understood. You may even receive more of a following as a female broadcasting channel. Well, let's get this straight and might cause a lot of people to leave when I say this, but when it comes to women and men, I do not believe, not for even a moment, that God has made a woman as some belittled little thing that should sit off on the sideline. In fact, yes, it does give an offense for me because Yana didn't want the video on the channel to begin with. She does have her own channel, but Yana is a major contributor to Israeli News Live. If it wasn't for the work that she's doing in the background, more than half of the broadcasts I do wouldn't happen in the first place. It's her diligent research, and I'm constantly trying to get her on and onto Israeli News Live because she is an incredible interviewer very intelligent woman and has a remarkable talent as a journalist, period. I mean, you go listen to RT, you're going to get both men and women. And no, this is not a men-only club here either. But I think a lot of this comes into misunderstanding in biblical theology, which kind of comes in play with the second paragraph. So when we speak about not taking offense, I hope you don't take offense either, sir. Mr. Mike is his name. Gary's Lord's Way is the other uh, person that comes on that he made a comment. I couldn't find his or I had to put it up here as well. That's why I said I don't know if I got deleted or not. But Gary says, well, as he quotes Genesis, he said, I didn't expect your wife to be the one on here. Why didn't you do it, Steve? But, you know, Genesis says, you know, Adam hearkening to the voice of his wife. And that's what got him in trouble. We're going to address those things here in just a moment. And like I said, maybe it'll be a blessing to sisters. But rather than to a long dissertation over this, I will take and give you a link of a video that I did a very deep and depth teaching on this. It also corrects the translations where translators have mistranslated Paul's writings as well. So you don't have to worry about it. I cover all the bases. You're just going to have to go to the description and pull the link up there and play that video as well. Anyway, says again, I intend no disrespect, but I do find it disrespectful that I come to get the news from Steve only to hear your heavy accent, which I like to liken to going to church service, expecting to listen to a male preacher, but some female gives the sermon. Yikes! I hope you're understanding as well that Steve is, but is not a major letdown to come for a channel expecting one man's voice crying out, uh, out the truth. All right, now... I'm going to try to be calm in what I have to say because this really needs to be dealt with and a lot of people that have been here for a long time already know where I stand on these issues. But this is when I realize this is dealing more on a religious issue to start with and, uh, and of course my wife's accent I happen to love and I know a lot of other people do. So if you want to go and, and talk to Mike as well and perhaps encourage him a little bit. Uh, 
maybe it might do him some good as well. So anyway, uh, let's go right into it from a biblical perspective. So let's get rid of the stereotype that men are some kind of goddess and women are just the lesser creature. And well, you know, Eve is the one that did all the wrong in the first place. And that's why we're in this predicament. That's generally the way the men think of it today in the first place. By the way, this is the video right here that I will be putting you a link in the description for you so that you can see it. And I do a lot of work right down to Diana and Artemis in this video here. Women that are watching, even if you're not religious, maybe you're not religious, you don't believe in the most of the things of the Bible because you're fed up to hear with all the male-dominated services that you had to listen to and that you were some low-life trash put off to the side only to have babies. After all, they have mistranslated Paul's words in saying that you're going to be saved as long as you can pump out kids like a chicken in a chicken farm. Well, no. No, that's not what Paul really said. Paul said you will be safe in childbearing because he was dealing with the cult of Diana and Artemis, and that's what was going on. Everybody was scared to death. And women, he had to reassure them that no, they'll be safe in their childbearing. They don't have to worry about having their children. You don't have to send your husband to some pornographic shop over at the Artemis Diana's cult over there in order to get him all brainwashed to come back and have kids with you. No, that's not the way it works. All right, so let's take a little, I'm going to give you a little basic understanding here. And yes, Hebrew is my specialty here. So those that want to go to the Noon Institute uh, are not saying go to a college here, but we actually have a, a channel called the Noon Institute. That's where these type videos actually should be at, but today we're going to deal with it here. Let's look at the basic idea of God creating man to start with first, just so you can know that man and woman were both created at the same time. All right. Then the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils a breath of life, and man became a living soul. But let's look at it in Hebrew. Ve'yotzer Yahuwah Elohim et ha'adam afar min ha'adama Okay, now you know it in Hebrew. If you know Hebrew, if you don't, I'm going to break it down for you, all right? So let's take a, a grammatic look at this right here. The Yotzer Yahuwah Elohim, all right? And God, see, God right here, he forms. Yatsar is to form, is to form a, a person from like clay or dust. And it's not dust either, because it's from min ha'adama, from the earth itself. God formed what? He formed ha'adam, the mankind, okay? Now, watch here. Afar, min ha'adama, he does it from the ground. Ipach bepa'av, okay? He breathes. Okay, he's going to breathe in his nose, Pepa'av, Nishmar Chaim. He's going to breathe in his own life. Now, notice right here, Yod Mim. This is your Hebrew lesson. Those that follow our Hebrew class, and I've really been bad about not teaching, forgive me. Yod Mim right here is the plural form of God's own life. It is Chai, which is life, and the Yod represents that it is Yahuwah, God's life in a plural form, being breathed into the one Adam, Ha-Adam, mankind. Both Adam and Eve were breathed into one human body right here. Then he says, uh, he says, Ve-Yahi Ha-Adam Nefesh Chaya. He becomes a living soul. Then we find that God takes half of Adam's side, puts him into a deep sleep. That ought to bring something to your memory. What happened to Yeshua on the cross? He's put into a deep sleep. Now, I know that's called death. And the Hebrew word that we use here in Hebrew about the deep sleep Adam goes into is called a coma in modern Hebrew today. All right? And Yeshua was put into a deep sleep. His side was opened up so that his bride could come out and could come back upon you. Hopefully it'll make some men not act like a bunch of wild animals thinking that they're smarter or braver or something better than women. 
But in this case here, Adam went into a deep sleep, just like Yeshua goes into the deep sleep. And God takes not a rib. No, it doesn't say rib in Hebrew. Of course, that is debated amongst different Hebraic scholars. But it says he took his side from him, an entire side of that man. And God made the woman. And in fact, the rabbinical scholar said there was more deliberation in making her than there was in making them. And that's why God called their name Adam. Okay, so the Adam applied to both Adam and Eve together. In fact, Adam is clearly in the Hebrew representation of humankind, whereas he literally called them Ish and Isha. Ish also is a compound word in Hebrew that comes from what? It comes from the divine name of God, Yahuwah, and as well as the word fire, Ash. And you take in both their names, they both have the divine name in their name. Isha has the He, the second letter. Ish, Adam's name, has the first letter. Yod He makes Yah, which is Yahuwah. It is our God himself living inside of them, the very fire of God, the Holy Spirit as we call it today. Wow, what do you know? You're going to find out something. Well, everybody might say, okay, yes, Steve, I'll agree. All right, they were equal before the fall, but after the fall, nope, God made her her ruler. Hmm, okay, by the way, Gary Lord's way, you make the comment, oh, you know, God says to her, you hearken unto the voice of your wife, and this is why you get what you get. Okay, all right. So, what about it then over here when it says, and it says, V'yomer elohim el ha'avraham el yareh, Okay, now, and God said, Abraham, let it not grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because thy bondwoman and all Sarah saith unto you, hearken unto her voice. For in Isaac shall the seed, uh, shall the, shall seed be, shall your seed be called. Well, so much for not listening to the voice of your wife, because in Abraham's case, he listened to the voice of his wife. In the case of Israel, in a message I just released on the Noon Institute, I was dealing with Huldah the prophetess, the high priest. At the very time when the king, they discovered the, the, the laws of God, they were found inside the temple, they were brought to the king, they read to the king, the king just... Oh, he's in shock. He says, go and inquire of God. He's got the high priest there. He's got the scribe there that writes the Bible itself, copies it down, book after book. And now he wants to inquire of God. Who do they go to? Huldah, the prophetess. What do you know? It's not a man, but she sends back, thus saith the Lord. What are they supposed to do, Gary? Are they supposed to say, oh, I'm sorry, I not, hearken not to the voice of your wife. She was married, by the way, and didn't send her husband either. Come on, guys. You guys have got to wake up. Listen, we don't have time for playing church. You think the two witnesses are going to come down here and give you a bunch of slack and say, oh, you guys have been doing a great job here down here keeping your women all in check and in line and stuff. Let me tell you something. Men have started more cults and perverted religions and do more pedophile and more uh, lusting after women and everything else than anybody that I know of. And preachers are the chief dirtiest things that there are. You don't think I don't know that? Sure I do, and you know it as well. You know, because of nonsense. You think God says there's two witnesses coming. He didn't say two Baptists, two Methodists, two Pentecostals that have their houses in order. No, he didn't. You know why? Because they don't, none of them have it right. They might have a little bit, and I'm not downing you if you're a Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, Catholic, whatever you may be. God bless you. The only thing I'm saying is you need to look at what God's Word has to say. All right, now let's deal with that issue about, oh, the woman did it. Let's see what God has to say here. All right, now... Verse 16 is probably the, the, the height of this. Let's back up. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, cursed art thou from among all the cattle and from all the beasts and, uh, and, and all, uh, the field. And upon your belly shall you go. The dust shall you eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity, which is hatred, between you and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. And they shall bruise thy head and you, thou shalt bruise their heel. Okay, or your heel. All right, now here's the problem right here. One, 
This is not a man's seed, it's the woman's seed. And so therefore, the woman made a mistake. That's right, she disbelieved or she was tricked into it because God asked her and she said, the serpent beguiled me. He deceived me. She was tricked into something. Adam made a greater sin because he wasn't deceived, but he did it anyway. And don't give me this stuff that, oh, he was a great guy going out there trying to save his wife. No, he was not. If he was, then when God come looking for him in the Garden of Eden, why was he hiding behind his wife there under the fig tree? All right? You know, okay, he doesn't say he's hiding behind his wife, but, you know, the point I'm trying to make here is that he was scared as well, and he was frightened, and he was fearful for his own life. He wasn't doing nothing to protect his own life. All right? He was trying to, he was, in fact, if anything, this only shows he wasn't doing it for Eve's sake. The first thing he says when God says, what have you done? He said, the woman did it. She did it. He was passing the buck faster than anybody I could see, just like most men do today. All right, let's look, look into this a little bit more. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy pain thy, and thy travail, and in pain thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over you. Oh, men love that one there, boy. Yeah, I'm going to get to tell her what to do. That's it, preacher, brother Steve. Well, you know what the problem is? Half of you don't know a word what you're reading here because you read English and the and I'm not saying you got to know Hebrew. I'm saying the translators did you a major disservice in the way they translated this here. And so I'm going to help you out a little bit on this. El, okay, let's look back here. El Haisha Omar Arbe Arba Itzvenecha. All right, now. It says, just like it says here a little bit, unto the woman, or literally not unto, but to the woman, el ha isha, to the woman, Omar, say, arba arbe avunecha. Now, most people would think it says, I will greatly multiply thy pain and thy sorrow and travail. Well, we got to get on down here. Okay, beharonecha beatzav. All right, but there is a problem with this right here because, oh, it could be I will, but unfortunately it is not I will. This is where the trouble comes in. But let's fix it up so you kind of get an idea of what it should be saying here. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 11 here. And it says right here, but if any man hate his neighbor and lie in wait for for him, an ambusher, okay? That's what a lying in wait is, right? But wait a minute, Brother Steve. We're not taught. Genesis doesn't say nothing about lying in wait. It just says, I'll greatly multiply thy sorrow. Right, 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 right. I'm sorry. I missed something, didn't it? Okay. They are obey law. See? Will lie in wait for her or for him. Lie in wait for him in this case here. Lo, because of the little dagish over the vav right there makes it a him or his. So, ve lo, which is what in English? Lie in wait. It, the word ar, ar, uh, ar, arav is a ambusher. All right, so here's what the problem is when you get over to Genesis 3 here. Okay, it's ha greatly, the one lying in wait, ar Ovanecha, okay? The one that lies in wait, that's the one that causes her the pain and the sorrow. It's not God. God is not the one that comes down here and beats you up. It's that serpent that lies in wait. And you guys out there that sit there and put women down like they're nobody don't even know why you're doing it. But you say, oh, but wait a minute. God told him he gets to rule all over her. Well, let's look at what else it says here, all right? All right, so now that you understand, our obey. Let me back up, make sure it sinks in good for you guys. Deuteronomy 11, right here. See, here it is again. The arav, okay? It's the same identical word there. The root of it is the same. Got to remember, Hebrew is compound constructed and everything. So you have, we have a vav in front of here. It says, and lies in wait for him. All right, the other one is greatly 
the, the great lying in wait, the great one that's lying in wait causes her pain and sorrow. So the construct around the root of the word, Arav, is the same. Okay, it's the same thing. So it is that ambusher. It was the serpent who was there to strike and to attack and to deceive, right? I'll make sure you got that. All right, now let's back up. Yes, I am a little bit excited. I guarantee you I am. All right. It reminds me one time when my wife was a Jehovah's Witness and they come in there. Uh, and, and by the way, she didn't leave Jehovah's Witness because of me. That girl was strong-headed about her, what she believed. It was because Yeshua himself came to my wife and was there and she lived in his presence, the Holy Spirit, there for three days. That's what brought her out. And she is not has any does not have anything to do with that and by the way the other part too where people say oh Steve we know now why you're why you support Putin because you married a Russian my wife happens to be Slovak not Russian and I can tell you one thing when I take up for Putin she's normally the adversary when it comes to that because she lived under communism and despised it she was beaten for being living under that because she went against the system. She's definitely not pro-Russia, and neither am I, but I'm pro-truth. That's what I'm about, okay? So we clear that up. And by the way, for a girl that somebody thinks, oh, she's not very smart or anything, she speaks five languages. And English is not her first. English is her last language she learned. I think she's doing pretty doggone good. Anyway, I'm sure most of you agree with that anyway. So anyway, so I, I hope it's being a blessing for the women out here anyway, because I'm, I'm on my soapbox tonight. All right, so let's get back right here. So I will greatly multiply thy pain and thy travail, but it's not I. It's the one that's lying in wait cause greatly multiplies the pain and the travail. In pain thou shalt bring forth children. I won't even go there. All right, let's get down to the next part. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over you. Okay. Ah, what a mess. Okay. Ve'el ishacha, okay, and to your husband, mm. let, me, let me get over here so you can sit in English, and, they sh and, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. Okay, so it says, Ve'el ishach tushuktecha. It doesn't say anything about her desire being to her husband. That's what blows me away. Ve'el ishach tushuktecha. Okay, ve'el ishach and to her husband tashuk shuk. By the way, the ta shows that it's her. It's speaking about her. There's your Hebrew lesson. Forgive me, guys, for being slow on this. The ta right there shows it's speaking about her. Okay, ve'el ishach. Okay, so she turns, shuk, shuk right here is the word for turning around, shuv. It comes from the word shuv, all right? The little sheen and the, and the vav right here together. All right, so she turns to her husband. Why does, why does she turn to her husband? All right, one, the one that ambushed her, the serpent himself that ambushed her, all right? Now she puts her in pain and in sorrow, and, and it's actually a totally different altogether. That pain and sorrow, by the way, is dealing with an emotional pain, not a physical pain of the human body. It has nothing to do with birthing the baby, but that happens to do with an emotional pain. Why? Because God prophesies to her in just a moment here and tells her she's going to birth sons, okay? And she is going to find out that one son later in life is going to kill the other. That's what causes her pain and sorrow. And who caused it? The serpent caused it, the one that was lying in wait. All right? Now, so let's break this down for you. So she takes and she turns to her husband. Why? Because she's lost her relationship with Almighty God. And He's the biggest thing around her. He's, he represents strength to her now because the God that she loves so much, she lost fellowship with God. He loses fellowship with God. We know that because He's blaming her for everything. And because of that, the consequences, he says, says here, Vehu imashabecha, and he will rule over you because he's completely out of the divine will of Almighty God. That's why that happens, and that's why men like make the comment like Mike and Gary's Lord's Way are totally messed up in their theology. 
which I know Gary is more secular on his, but he throws in there, you know, it's like going into church and hearing a woman preaching, yikes, okay, Gary, okay, Mike, I'm hoping this helps you. And, and, and I just pray that it does, Gary, as well. I hope it helps you. And I really trust it blesses women and the men that are listening out there as well. But that's what happened right there. He rules over her, not by divine authority. Do you think the man that, that has sinned before God all of a sudden gets a reward? I mean, come on. And to Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of your wife, hast eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake, and on the toil shalt thou eat of it all the days of your life. Okay, thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. And let me tell you something, the one that had to reap those thorns was Yeshua himself when they put the crown of thorns on his head. That's who paid the price for you. And that's the same thing about it as well. Let me tell you something, Yeshua had to come and die because of what Adam did. Because he willingly sinned. But do you know what had to happen in order to fix the, the mistake that, that, that Eve made? God just needed one woman that would believe His Word unconditionally and not doubt His Word. That's what Mary did. Mary had to correct the mistake before Yeshua could even come. Before, See, they both sinned. Adam willfully sinned and plunged the entire human race into death. Eve was deceived about it, didn't do anything intentionally. She did not have a willful sin. She disbelieved God's word. She, she figured it would make her wiser, so she fell for what the serpent did. God didn't want somebody to just do like that. God wanted somebody, to, when I say something, you obey it, believe it, and don't ask no questions about it. So when God said that I'll put enmity, hatred between thy seed and the woman's seed, he's speaking to the serpent, I'm going to put hatred between your children there. He wasn't playing games. And he, when he said that she would have a seed, the woman has a seed. And let me tell you something. Yeshua was her seed. And until she believed, until God could get a woman that would believe Him unconditionally, there was no way for you as a man could have a Savior. It took a woman to believe God's Word in order for a man to get Jesus Christ to fix the mistake that Adam made. And he tried to do it with Abraham and Sarah. He knew they weren't going to believe it, but that's what he did. Notice what he said. Why did Sarah laugh? Saying, how can this be? See, he would have, he would have loved to have brought it through Sarah, but Sarah disbelieved his word and still couldn't bring that promised son. It took all the way down to finally he got to Mary, and when Mary believed it, she conceived that child, and the, and the seed that Mary had was Yeshua. He come forth to redeem both man and the woman. And let me tell you something, it does apply for her as well, because it took Christ to redeem her too. I agree with that, because as a human race, we're all fallen. Is that right? Sure we are. But let me tell you something, as a fallen mankind, I want to tell you something. He came, He redeemed us both. Do you think that God only redeems a man? No, I don't think so. Do you think that man's God's only going to save a woman because she bears babies because you misinterpreted that word? as well? not misinterpreted, it's just mistranslated. So a lot of this stuff, guys, is not misinterpreted. It's only translated incorrectly. And you guys put the translators as if they're some gods. Oh, King James made everything perfect. You know, even this Hebrew one here didn't do a good job of translating it right. Okay, the thing is, though, is I know what it says. All right? And the same with Greek. And there are scholars that back up what I'm telling you. I'm not just saying it of my own accord. There are scholars that back it up as well. So if you want to go beating up on women and everything, beat yourself up first because you need to get yourself in line with God's Word. Then maybe you can do something to help somebody else. Now, all right. I'm kind of get off my soapbox now. Anyway, so yes, it is offensive to me. I have to be honest with you, Mike. It's offensive to me because my wife is an incredible journalist. I wish she was in here all the time. You know, and okay, maybe you have a hard time understanding her accent. A lot of people love her accent. You know, but you seem to understand it because you even said, though later, you appreciated what she said. It was all correct. All right. We just got to get off of this. And I think where the problem is, is too many have been still stuck in that old school theology. You know, the 
backwoods thinking, you know, and, and this is not bad. It's not so much backwoods. Guys, you got to go, go, go look at, go look at Paul. Go look at Yeshua himself. Go look at Jesus. Did you ever see Jesus belittle a woman ever one time? Oh, you know, oh, I imagine someone say, oh, he told the little woman there, you know, he says, not me for me to give you children, the children's bread to you dogs. She's a Gentile. He wasn't just talking to her. He was talking to the men and women, the entire Gentile race. Not just to the woman. So no, it doesn't work like that. When they were ready to stone the woman, isn't it funny how the men only brought the woman out to be stoned? I thought, according to the law, if you go by the Levitical law, you were supposed to stone both the man and the woman. Why didn't they bring the man out? Why did they only bring the woman out? Because they still like this guy's here. Thinking the woman's always the one to blame. Yeshua taught us differently. He really did. Look at the way he loved women. Even Mary Magdalene loved more than all the other apostles. They knew it. Anyway, don't forget, if it's blessed you what I've said, even though I'm on my rant here, take a look at this video here. I'll put the link in the description below for you. It'll be a blessing to you. And Gary, you should know I know you have listened to my ministry for years. I know, Gary, you've been there a long time. And you may be just still stuck in that way that, no, it's this way and it's that way. But, Gary, you, you need to take and listen yourself and really look at what's said in the Word of God and not just sit there with all this nonsense thinking that the woman is some belittled little thing there. I mean, look at all the women in the Bible that God has called. Do you think that... <laughs> Uh, I mean, we could go on and on and on. I mean, women called of Israel to lead the nation and lead them into battle and everything else. And don't just say, oh, that's just politics, because I hold it had nothing to do with politics. All right? Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Uh, I guess this is my soapbox message for Israeli News Live. Shalom. Sure.